Uh, hello everyone welcome to the last session of this uh, module bgp vpn with vxlan so in the previous uh, three sections we have talked about the overview of vxlan then followed by the underlay configuration then we have built the l2 vni configuration and then in the last section we have done the l3 vni configuration if you have not gone through the previous videos uh, i will recommend you please go through that because we have talked about a lot of verification commands uh, which we are not going to cover in this session in this session, we are only going to talk about uh, the route type 5, which is uh, when you have a network, which is the IP normal network, which is not part of the VXLAN, and how can you make it uh, make the communication happen uh, for the same customer. Now, in, in the previous section, we uh, lately had a, a problem that uh, from one client uh, IP, we were not able to reach one of the other client IP address. So if I, if I share the topology here uh, we were struggling to reach from 2031 to 10.21 and the reason for that is uh, this route 10.21 here let me pick a pin uh, this route here 10.21 uh, basically this prefix was not present on this router now if it is not present in the vtip2 then bjp is not going to let the vtip3 know about it so vtip3 won't know about this particular prefix and since this is only route type 2 based learning, this is not route type 5. Um, if the packet comes to this VTIP3 with the destination of this IP address 10.21, which is not present here, and also uh, that VLAN is not local to this VTIP, in that case, it cannot breach the traffic because it needs to know it in the routing table before it can breach the packet. So that's the problem. Uh, the moment I initiated some traffic from 1021 with a gateway, uh, with a ping to the gateway, then the entry for 10 to 21 was created. Then this P3 came to know about it. And then the ping started working fine. Uh, I was misinterpreting 20 to 21 as 10 21, but that was the problem that it was missing there. Uh, and we will see how can we avoid those kind of situations if we can do a route type 5 uh, shortly. So let me take you to the CLI here. Um, if I go to uh, VTIP3, show BGP, L2, VPN, VPN, uh, we were trying to reach 10.21. So now you can see I have this prefix built in here, which is 10.21. So if I receive uh, the traffic from 2031 with the destination of 1021 since it knows that it is behind the vtip number two uh, it should be able to route the packet similarly if we go to vtip number two and if we do a show bgp l2 vpn evpn i should be able to see the routes for uh, 2031 which is what i have here now, since both the VTIPs, they know the routes about uh, the two other hosts I'm talking about, I should be able to reach it. So if I now try to reach show run, show pipe, int brief, exclude unassigned. So 2031 belongs to 106, ping VRF, uh, VRF proxy, this is the name. And if I try to reach um, 10.21, now i can reach so from here i can reach 10 21 i can reach 10 11 and i can also reach 20 dot um, 21 so i have now the complete reachability for l2 vni and l3 vni but if you look at the uh, vpn table uh, it only consists of route type 2 uh, there is no route type 5 yet now what we want to achieve is here you have an external network which is uh, 8888 i want to configure uh, this p4 as a vtip for only the vni the layer 3 vni vni it should it is not going to have any layer 2 vni for this particular interface what we have here and um, i will still be able to make the communication happen from rest of the network to this IP address of 8880, which is external network to me. So let's jump into 9300P4 and let's see what we have there. This is my P4. Um, if I do a show run interface 101, this is the client facing interface what I have. Um, the IP address uh, will be 
I want to create a VRF, uh, VRF definition, and this is customer A. The RD value is 10.004. I can give the value of 901. That was what I had. Address family IPv4 unicast. Route target both. You can do 901. That is the value what we had uh, in the in the layer three VNI. So I'm going to import that, and then if I create that interface layer three uh, VNI VLAN nine zero one VRF forwarding customer A. IP address 99.9.1.4 VLAN configuration 901 I need to configure this member VNI 900001 then I'll go to the NV interface I'll configure source interface as loopback zero the host reachability protocol should be bgp and my member vni 9000001 vrf customer a no shirt if i do a show run section router bgp i don't have anything yet so what i will do router bgp 10 bgp router id is 10 neighbor 10 remote is 10 which is my router flicker address update source loopback zero address family EVPN neighbor 10.0.0.9 activate and also I want to do send community extended so if I, if I now take a look at the configuration of the BGP I have configured the address family L2VPN EVPN uh, in the show run interface VLAN 901 this is my L3 VNI show run section VLAN configuration uh, this is the L3 VNI configuration. If I do a show run VRF customer A, this is the configuration I have, right? Interface VLAN 901 and all this thing. Now, this interface, which is uh, facing the external network, 2 gig 101, I also need to put this in the VRF. Uh, VRF forwarding customer A. The IP address is going to be, uh, I can put an IP address here, let's say 4. All right, um, I need to create a WestPF process. I want to run the WestPF between uh, this particular uh, VTEP, uh, this particular uh, B, uh, switch and the customer site. So I WestPF chain is already running. This is for my internal network. This is for my core network reachability. I'm going to create a different process. Let's say router WestPF uh, 65001 VRF customer A. Router ID is going to be this address here. And if I go to 101 IP USPF 65001 area 100, that's how I configured on the other side uh, to match the area number. So if I now do 101, if I do a show IP USPF neighbor, you can see my USPF neighborship has come up uh, with this um, remote client. And if I do a show IP route for WestPF, you can see that I'm learning, uh, I'm sorry, do a show IP route for VRF customer A. You can see that I'm learning this external routes here, 8888. Um, this is my external network, which you want to reach. But if you go to uh, this routing table here, the global routing table on this side, which is uh, 
the site A, basically client number A for customer A. If you do a show IP route, uh, it, it doesn't have any of this external network here present. So it doesn't know that. And also if you do, of course, I mean, this guy will not know it because we are not running any routing protocol between the VTAP and this guy, which is fine, but it has a default route. But the important thing is if you go to the VTAP, if you do a show BGP, L2VP and VPN, um, it, it doesn't know about uh, the external network. It doesn't know about 8888. It has no idea. And similarly, uh, on this guy uh, also, if you do a show IP route for VRF customer A, it has know about the internal network what we have in the VXLAN, which is uh, 10 0, 0, which is 192, 168, 10, 11, 10, 20, 10, 21, 20, 21, 20, 31. It doesn't know about it. Okay. So now what we need to do is now that my L3 VNI is configured and let me check show VNI NV, uh, show NV peer. It is not there yet. Uh, what I do, uh, show run interface NV1. Okay. Yeah, so this part is fine. Uh, I think what I'm missing is if I do uh, VRF definition, customer A, address family IPv4 anycast. I, I need to configure this for uh, this keyword, both. If I do a show IP, LGV, LTVP and EVPN, I want to see the routes. Uh, which we can see. I can see 10, 11, 21, 20, 21, and 20, 31. So I can see all the four clients here. However, this clients uh, on the other VTIPs, they still don't know about the external network what I have, okay? They don't have any route type 5. So now what I do, I go to config T, router BGP process, address family IP before VRF, and then this is customer A. I'm going to do advertise L2 VPN, a VPN, and then I'm going to redistribute my WSPF 65001 match internal external. At the same time, I'm going to do neighbor 10.0.0.9 next hop self. The reason I'm doing it because when it is trying to redistribute the route, I want to make sure that the next stop is reachable. So now if you look at the configuration for my BGP, I am I have configured the VRF uh, address family and then I have advertised the L2VP and EVPN so that I can do back and forth advertising from L2VPN to the VRF and then VRF to the L2VPN. And then I have also redistributed my WSPF learn routes, whatever I have learned through the from the external customer which is which is what you can see here so whatever routes uh, i am learning from in this ospf peering i'm going to tell the evpn family about it now if you go here and if you check the same thing i will expect some kind of type 5 routes here as you can see now it knows about 192.168.44.0 which is basically the link between the p4 the vtep4 and the c4 and also the external network, which is configured as a loop back on this uh, C site 4. I'm learning this and it is telling it is learned through VTEP 4. Okay. Now, if you check here, if you do a show IP route VRF customer A, I also know about all this internal network, which is 10, 11, 10, 21, 20, 31, everything I know about here. So if I go to... Uh, if I go to take a look at one of these routes in detail, show BGP, L2VP, and EVPN, route type 5, tag 0. And then you need to put the hex string here. Uh, okay, it, it says route type, put the IP address. For route type 5, you don't need to define the MAC address. Uh, the length is 32. And hit enter. You can see this is how I learned the route. It has a tag of 
you can see the label of 900001 because this is coming through the L3 VNI, right? And also you can see the route target, which is uh, what I'm trying to export in the L3 VNI. Um, I'm just doing it here and I'm learning it from 10004. Now, if you go to this uh, routing table of this guy, which is, you can see the port number is uh, gigabit 105. Let's see which VRF it is under. Show run to physgeek 105. This is under VRF external. So IP route VRF external. Okay, I'm still not learning about all these routes. So what I need to do, if I do a show run section router SPF, you need to advertise it back into the BGP. A router SPF 65001, redistribute BGP 10 um, subnets. Now, if I'm redistributing this uh, L2 EVPN routes, I imported that from L2 VPN to VPN before. And now I'm redistributing that from VPN before to my OSPF process, which I'm running between the P to the C. So if I now look at this router configuration, the route here, it is now learning all the routes, 10, 11, 21, 31. So let's try to reach ping VRF external, 192.168.10.11. I can reach it. So at this point of time, my basic IP reachability is there, 20.21 and 20.31 so i can reach anything from this network so which means i have end-to-end -end connectivity now from this site one two three and four even though this is external network this is not part of in layer 2 vni but only by using the l3 vni as a type 5 i'm going to do the advertisement back and forth and now my configuration is complete at this point of time i can reach everything so if you want to take a look at uh some information here let's just show l2 route and then you evpn and then you want to put the mac address for ip information the host ip if you want to put it for 192.168.10.21 you can see this is how it looks like if you do it for 2021 i don't think you will see anything because this is not that same l2 uh, but for anything in the 10 network, you will you will see it. So that's pretty much uh, what we have from this session. Uh, there are some counters you might want to look at. If you now go back to the router 4, if you do a show in v, VNI peer summary, you can see that now I have one neighbor here. If you do a VNI, VNI number 900001 detail, you can see that uh, it is now incrementing the byte, byte counters being switched. So that, that being said, uh, that's pretty much all uh, we have from this EVPN address family configuration um, and the basic understanding. Hope it helped you to understand how the overall solution works, what are the different components tied into it. Uh, the underlay is very important. Uh, and let me show you one more output. So if you go to uh, the route reflector, which we configured also as a rendezvous point, if you do a show IP and route, um, you want to make sure that this is working fine. So if something is not working in the when it is trying to broadcast, when it is trying to put the packet into multicast encapsulation and trying to send out, if that is not working, you might want to come back and check what is going wrong with your multicast. So that's very important. Um, and also, if you want to look at any of the route details, uh, you need to check the commands by specifying the route tag and the route uh, number instead of doing the all command. So all is going to give you a summary output. But if you want to look at the details of it, what exactly you have inside the route, what all type of communities you have, uh, you can see the OSPF router ID is also converted into extended community, what we generally do see even when you convert OSPF into VPN before. So that's what you see here. You see the cluster ID, which is the route reflector. So it has a whole lot of information. You can just play around that. And uh, yeah, hopefully, hopefully it was helpful. Thanks very much for your time. See you until we come up with another session next time. Thank you very much. Take care.